Hello ladies and gents, welcome to this episode of the Pro Photographer Cheap Camera Challenge where we find a pro photographer and give them the cheapest camera we have. Only this time around we're in Thailand and it's not a photographer, it's a cinematographer. Hello Brandon. Hello. You look just like you do on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever thought about getting a gimbal, you've probably seen Brandon's videos. Some call him the gimbal god, while others know him for his masterful cinematography. His work has won him multiple Vimeo Staff Pick Awards and has been featured by everyone from the BBC to Nat Geo, Smithsonian and Thai. And though he grew up in the States, Brandon now travels the world as a nomadic filmmaker. I see you've got your camera here already? Yes, I have a rig I've been testing out. Is there any reason you always go with the Sony lineup? Actually, originally I got into using Sony's because I was looking for small cameras that were pretty good in low light. I was going out a lot at night, and the balancer would always be on the lookout if you had like you know a big DSLR or something because he didn't want right, anybody going there trying to take paparazzi pictures. And I realized that with these uh, mirrorless cameras, if you slap a pancake lens on there, right. you can actually slip it pretty easily into a vest or like you know under a blazer or something. So it got me past the security, even if they were doing sort of that light, sort of half-hearted right, frisk, gave me something to do when everybody else was staring at their yeah. phones. Because you usually have a lot of cameras, yeah. I thought I'd give you an A camera and a B camera. I think you'll find it almost like being back in the old days. Not sure nostalgia is a good thing with technology. It's nice and compact, just the way you like it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a classic Disney themed camera. This is what I call the dad grip. <laughs> Just like, yeah. It says HD. Yeah, they have a number of options, and by a number, I mean two. <laughs> <laughs> For kids that need spot metering, multi zone metering, and center metering, and Disney style zoom sounds, <laughs> this camera has it all. Do you want to check out your B camera? I'd love to check out the B camera. So here comes the B. Ta da! <laughs> It's the same camera with a slightly different visual theme. It's very different. This oh, it's is, very different. Okay. This is, this is with Mini. You got I Mini guess and Pluto. It's I've got the masculine like energy, and I've got the sort of platonic romance energy, depending on which I want to bring to the scene. Yes. They appear to have identical zooms, uh, screens, everything else is really the same. <laughs> so I really could roll either way. You seem really happy, but then you're muttering under your breath. <laughs> Jesus. What is this? I don't want to waste this battery. This looks like it's going to die in about five minutes. Reminds me of a toilet seat. It's just kind of... <laughs> it doesn't like to stay out, which is good, just in case, you know, I leave it out and the battery goes dead, right? You'll be happy to know that you can actually mount this on the gimbal. I could probably just like duct tape this to my forehead and it would be fine. <laughs> actually, maybe I should do that. Maybe, maybe I should, I should roll that. POV maybe style. Should. I could have two cameras and shoot this one in 3D. <laughs> this won't make me look like a roving pedophile at all. <laughs> No, sir, this is not kid bait. This is perhaps the best setup you could ever hope for. Proper multi cam shoot. Especially for our kind of challenge. <laughs> well, I can't wait to make magic with these. <sighs> Brandon's currently staying in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So naturally, we've come to film one of its many temples. It's got that classic mid-90s camcorder design that lends itself quite well to barrel rolls. The screen's a little hard to see in the daylight. <laughs> As I imagine, it's pretty hard to see in any light. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Cut? I wanted to ask you, Brad, we're at this, you know, beautiful... I don't think I gym. recorded anything. Sorry, hold on. Right. I'm like a dad now where most of my footage is me like, is this thing on? How do you use these things? Watching Brandon film is entertaining, to say the least. He likes to make slicing motions with his camera, as if he's playing a game of Virtual Fruit Ninja. You're doing this with a serious expression on your face, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a process of refining the idea through multiple takes. And then in editing, I'll find one that hopefully fits smoothly with another take and, and begins to tell a story. Making random footage look like it was shot with uh, a plan in mind. Right. <laughs> Would they be okay with us filming? It depends on the temple. This one, I think it's fine. We're not interrupting any monks. Brandon likes to film people who are busy doing something. Not only are they more interesting, they're more natural in front of the camera. He's also a stickler for sound, 
and likes to use a mix of sound recorded on location and audio samples from a library to help immerse viewers in the scene. Speaking of uh, how Brandon likes to do things differently, we came into the temple, really beautiful hall, beautiful decoration on the ceiling, big giant Buddha, nope, didn't want to film any of that. The scale of it doesn't translate right. on the camera at all. So what I'm trying to do is just get shots that actually take advantage of the small size of this camera. I like that extreme level of concentration you have on your face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're kind of kneeling and then swaying back and forth, and any normal person would think that you're just praying to Buddha, but nope, you're just... <laughs> I'm always doing uncomfortable angles because that's how you get unique angles. You should just start a new fitness regime. The Brandon Lim Mills. <laughs> <laughs> I should have an obnoxious fitness cult around my style of shooting. Yeah. Just like CrossFit. And we'll have like, you know, little elitist mottos like, if you're not cross branding, you're not fit or something, yeah. you know? <laughs> Instead of kettlebells, you just have like this really weird <laughs> gimbal pushes, good mornings or whatever they're called. It's all about the story. <laughs> story first. <laughs> Lift. Balling. I can't stop doing this for some reason. <laughs> it's just the weight of it. It's perfect for those spins. Actually, maybe I'll film that. Did I stop it? <laughs> Did you even press on? <laughs> Up. So I'm framing up that temple nicely and spin it. Right. Because then in post, maybe I can reverse the shot. So the spin right, right, turns right, into right, a perfectly right. framed shot. This is easier to, to begin perfectly than to end it perfectly. Just as long as they're not in the middle of eating noodles or something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dead giveaway, Picking wouldn't it? Rainbows. <laughs> so you're not going to connect those shots that you've you've barrel rolled. No, it's more like a menu. You know, I'm giving myself a, like a palette of shots I can choose from. That's a ton of uh, footage to go through. Well, that's where the reality TV experience comes in handy. Right. At the end of one shoot, for one show, I'd have 90 hours of footage. It's like a big boulder and you're trying to make a rather small statue out of it, right? So you're just chipping away and chipping away until you form the general shape of it. How are you not like a heroin addict by now? <laughs> I definitely became a caffeine addict to stay stimulated while trying to cut through all that footage. And though we spent two hours at the temple, we'll probably only use three seconds of the footage. So you, you call yourself a nomad? So yeah. It's a big word. It sounds it's better good. than homeless. When I hear the word nomad, I, you know, I think of someone tending to their flock and moving from passion to passion. Right. But you're just like a filmmaker with this flock of gimbals moving from <laughs> filming location to filming location. For me, being a nomad means simply you just don't have a fixed place to live. Isn't that really stressful? It's so stressful trying to pick the next place. Right. That part's miserable. I was going to say if you have like a globe, you'll just spin it and then throw or, or like a map of the world, <laughs> and then throw a dart on it. But you can't really do that with your... Statistically speaking, I'd probably end up in the ocean most of the time. <laughs> But I'd be Jacques Cousteau if that was the case. Well, Brendan showed me his, his phone earlier, so maybe he threw a, a dart on his phone. And you were trying to... <laughs> My phone... I think I dropped this, uh, this lovely piece of machinery here at least five or six times. This is the phone of a nomad. Do you think you'll settle down eventually and just find a place to call home? I want to have five. That's my ultimate dream. Maybe split Croatia, yeah. Chiang Mai, Thailand, Sevilla, Spain, Baja, Mexico. Places I find uniquely charming, livable, good climates, great culture, visually inspiring. I could film all day in any one of these places and never get bored. Brandon actually shoots and edits every day. Sometimes he'll go back to a place he's previously filmed and shoot it differently to see what works best. We've come to Chai Lai Orchid, an elephant sanctuary and eco lodge run by Alexa and Bay, a married couple. How did you and Bay meet, by the way? Did Bay roll up on, a, on an elephant, like shirtless, and you were like, that's my man? <laughs> no, we were working together, but um, he was sometimes shirtless and on an elephant when I first met him. Yeah. Like and I a... thought he was really cool, <laughs> but he thought I was crazy. Right. He didn't speak English. Right. So you guys have um, set up a, an eco lodge with uh, how many elephants now? Uh, 12 elephants. I actually read before coming here on your TripAdvisor, there were people who were like, this place is not eco-friendly. I see elephants in chains, but there's actually a reason for that, right? Currently in Northern Thailand, it's illegal to let elephants go wild in the jungle because oh, they have to protect the forest. You don't use a rope because a rope can cut into their skin. A chain allows you to quickly untether the elephant and move them to different locations so they don't overforage. There's one elephant that I'm really close to 
for the first two and a half years I was here, I never had a day off. One day I was really sick and I, didn't, I couldn't come to work that day. Okay. And she took off her chain and came to our house. Oh, wow. They can actually remove their own chains. Yeah, they're okay. very clever. That's good to know. I've seen one of the elephants over here take off her chain because it's like a tension lock. So if they keep flicking oh, at it, okay. it'll open. And she took off her chain and she went over and took the grass because oh, her mohoot was eating lunch. She didn't right. want to wait for him to bring the food. So she <laughs> went and picked up the food and went back and stood in the same place. Like, yeah. we saw you. For this shoot, Brandon's going to show us why he's known as the gimbal god. Anybody's guess if I can actually get this thing to balance. It's weightless. We'll see if the gimbal will compensate. That's all right. Fantastic. You have a bit of a, uh, a bruise above your eye. I was testing this gimbal and I was walking backwards like this and I, I thought it was all clear behind me but actually there was a pole. Right. And I smacked my head into the pole and then the gimbal was still going and it smacked me in the face like with the camera screen. And then I was bleeding all over the ground and it was just like drips of blood. As my girlfriend was tending to the wound, you know, we were still in public here. Yeah. Another guy walks past and he has a little gimbal. So he probably with his knows camera. who you are. He gave me this look, like like a double take, like you know, and he was like <laughs> staring at me for a good ten seconds. I was like, oh my god, please don't recognize the me. The gimbal god bleeds, he's immortal too. <laughs> So we can go for us up here. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah, good. Two banana. Uh, Take we'll go up there. Sure. Great. Okay. Okay. okay we'll wait here. <laughs> Superman. No, no, you're Batman. He's Batman. He's Batman. What do you think of this? Is this cool? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I guess you have a, a second cam, right? I guess Batman is your DP and Superman is the uh, <laughs> Superman's the client. Yeah, Superman's the client. What do you think, Superman? Yeah. Superman's like. That's a rubbish camera. Superman's like, I hired an Ari Alexa. What is this? <laughs> yep. That is how Zack Snyder made Batman versus Superman. <laughs> Batman. Hey you, hey you. Go. Go Superman. <laughs> With baby? I'm gonna shoot a bunch of shots that begin the transition right. and a bunch of shots that end the transition. Whip pans and things like that right. where I whip this way and then the next time I'm shooting I whip the rest of the way in and, right. I, and then if I cut at the right point it looks like a transition. Oh look at the little yeah, one. he's tiny. He's so cute. Yeah. Oh my god, that's a lot of dust. <laughs> Go, little elephant. That way. No, not me. Not me. I'm not interesting. He's interesting. Brandon likes to get close to his subject and film at their eye level. Only problem is, his subject this time weighs over 200 kilos and doesn't speak English. <laughs> that's not Dumbo. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Gotta work on that spatial awareness, little guy. Can you pet, pet the elephant? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Nice. Discharge. In order to make the best use of our two camera setup, Brandon's got one camera on the gimbal and is using the other one for close ups. It's like two. someone bouncing a, a car tire. Yeah. It basically is a car tire. Yeah. So that sound is that the sound they happy? make when there's a new elephant? I guess so. Here in Southeast Asia, humans and elephants have been working together for over 4,000 years. Hey, Mahouts learn to train elephants from a young age and develop strong bonds with their charges that can last a lifetime. For Brandon, it's important to avoid filming the obvious and instead capture these moments of intimacy between his subjects. You think the elephants are really cute and and probably quite soft, but then when you touch them, they have like really stubbly hair. Brandon is switched on and focused when he's filming. He's always aware of what's going on around him, a habit that he picked up during his formative years filming for True Life, a reality show on MTV. He's always looking for shots that are dynamic and can help tell a story. This lets him build a narrative out of previously unrelated shots. It's like he said before, 
It's all about the story. Story first. Spontaneous stuff is what makes videos interesting, you know? You yeah. It, yeah, it was awesome. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Watch out, little guy. <laughs> Careful. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I think he's made of tougher stuff. The field of view in these cameras is very narrow, so I tried to actually take advantage of that by going further back with the gimbal right. and just making fluid and broad movements with the gimbal so it comes across as kind of like almost like a cinematic uh, telephoto gimbal type of shot. And then, you know, with the handheld camera, I was trying to get more candid, intimate, like close-up shots, right. you know, getting into the action, trying to feel like I was part of the, the play between the mahout and the elephant. And despite the difficulties involved, Brandon never misses the chance to shoot from an interesting perspective. Thailand is, is such a popular place for tourists, you know, does it ever annoy you? It's like complaining about traffic, right? You're sitting in traffic, you're like, oh, all this traffic! Bloody tourists! Ah, where'd this traffic come from? Well, <laughs> same place you came from. How do you get them out of the way? What used to be the solution was to get up really early, right? right. You get up at dawn, you go there, there's no tourists. Right. Until every tourist figured that out. Now if you go to like Angkor Wat in yeah. Cambodia yeah. at 5 a.m., it's just covered, crawling with tourists. Yeah, because how else are you going to get the best shot with your phone? Right. So, you know, now I'd say it's just a matter of clever cropping and also filming away from the main attraction. Is there anything you wouldn't film? Something that comes to mind right now since we're in Thailand is what they call human zoos, where okay. you take an indigenous tribe or, you know, somebody who lives traditionally and you present them to tourists as an attraction. It's like something I learned in film school. A cinematography professor was teaching me composition and he said, if you don't know whether or not to keep something that's on the edge of the frame or to crop it out, he said, when in doubt, leave it out. Mm. So when in doubt about the ethics of a shot, just leave it out. You can wait until you get a genuine invitation and then go and experience the culture. And if that invitation never arises, you don't need to go there. Right. Just like my house. If I don't invite you in, then it's not your right to hire a tour company to bring you into my apartment and watch me edit videos on my computer. <laughs> I'm going to start that tour now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get to touch one of his gimbals. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I like it or not. Speaking of tours, aside from elephants, there's another thing Thailand is famous for. Okay, so we're at a kind of Muay Thai gym. How would you go about filming this so it's more dynamic? The first thing I do is I look for a good subject. Right. So I don't want the kids who are just goofing around. If there's only one kid who's just super intense, I'm just going to spend 90% of my time on them. And then I get as close as I can to the action. There's an old quote from Michael Bay yeah. that uh, I have Scooping low with the telephoto. Hey, he's, he's a good cinematographer. Yeah. Think what you will of his movies, but he has some good advice. Right. And I remember one thing he said was, put the camera in the most dangerous position possible. Mm -hmm. So wherever the camera's most likely to get damaged, that's probably also the most exciting place to place the camera. Ooh. This is it's actually pretty nice inside the ring. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the one doing the actual fighting, but this is kind of cool. I wouldn't mind getting rope dope. Does it happen often that you, because of the shot, you get into a dangerous situation. Oh yeah, I fall all the time when I'm shooting. Oh, yeah? I destroyed a few lenses by dropping the camera, right. and I've destroyed a few cameras with water damage. Ah. But so far, no blunt force trauma has destroyed the body of one of my cameras yet. Right. See if we can break that today. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> cheap camera, cheap speaker challenge. <laughs> I guess uh, there's a, a whole a ritual of... of Entering the ring. I think this is far cooler than uh, actual boxing matches where they're walking in in a big cloak. And I guess it's also a warm up. This gym, Petanpang, is known for producing great female Muay Thai fighters. However, many of the girls here are still too young to have competed professionally, and Brandon's looking to film a more intense bout. Luckily, there's a couple of topless lads hanging around who just so happen to be the trainers. Do you want to guess which one's the boxer? Oh, gee. I'm just looking at this gentleman here with the, uh, you're looking with the one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, I have just the one. <laughs> I think he boxes. New Year's resolution, New Year's resolution. Whenever I'm shooting action with any camera, I try to get up close, try to get a variety of shots, try to you know, capture the intense little bits as separate close-ups rather than just one broad wide shot for the whole thing. Suffer there? Punch. Brandon keeps telling them to make a serious face, but I guess it's, 
It's also kind of hard when you tell them to punch straight at the lens when you're holding, when you're holding, I think, yeah, when you're holding mini up to their face. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Okay, it looks like you worked out more of a sweat than they got. Yeah, they did. I'm getting the workout here. I like how um, at the start, Brandon was just kind of looking for inspiration in a way. He was looking to see what they could do. And now he's actually narrating an entire story between these two guys getting reaction shots. I love shooting action. I love shooting sports because there's just a lot going on, you know? The, the camera gets to be sort of dancing with the subject. They're moving, I'm moving, I move in a complimentary way to accentuate what they do. How did you find who was the protagonist and who was the antagonist? Oh, there's no good guys and bad guys in these stories. There's only two sides and I make sure each side gets some shots in. Like that little backspin that one guy did, once yeah. I noticed that, I was like, okay, that's his signature move. Yeah. Then the other guy liked the leaping sort of knee kick, so I made sure that he got a chance to do that and really showcase it. You know, I gave him a long distance to jump. So one guy was on back and one guy was taken. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're just exactly. missing Street Fighter. We're missing that. We're, we're missing the Haruken. Okay. And I just look here. Brandon is yeah. a perfectionist. And as long as his subject isn't tired, he'll do as many takes as is needed <laughs> sure, in order sure. to get it right. Okay, good. Great job. See, down here, you look very tall. Yeah, big, yeah. It's a good angle, okay. Did you just take the mick out of his height? <laughs> I mean, hey, it works for me too. Okay, wait, wait, you, come here. Down, down, and fi finish. Okay, wait, one, one more time, one more time. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's too fake. Everyone here, I want them to cheer. Sure. All the girls? Yeah. We're here. We're here. All of you? You're here. Okay. <laughs> Does this happen often? The group photo always. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I don't even want to hit it that hard. Were there any good points? To using that camera. I know there are many, but you can list one of the millions of advantages. One thing that's actually kind of nice, I kind of let go of that like obsession with perfection. I don't have to think, oh, is this perfectly in focus? Is this perfectly exposed? This thing is always gonna look a little smudgy and a little imperfect. Yeah. But hey, we like that, right? That's part of, the art is not supposed to be perfect, it's right. supposed to be real, right? Yeah. So now I can just focus on making it interesting. They say home is where your heart is. So it's no wonder Brandon calls himself a nomad because it seems whenever he's holding his camera, he's right at home.
So what did you think of the uh, dynamic duo? Your AB punch. Oh man, uh, well, you know, having one of these cameras is a blessing in and of itself, and having two is just an absolute dream. <laughs> it kind of felt like I was shooting with a 50 millimeter on right. full frame, right. or maybe like a 75 equivalent at a fixed F16 or so. You know, get that nice Spooning cinematic F16, right? <laughs> Who doesn't want to nice stop all the way down on their, on their long lens? It had uh, the weird tendency to slow down the shutter speed if the light got a little low. Oh, or, or if it okay. decided the subject was too backlit, you know, then it would open up the aperture, slow down the shutter speed, and everything would get all streaky. You didn't use the touchscreen, I'm sure that was the reason. Oh, it has a touchscreen? No. <laughs> <laughs> but this one does. I'm oh, sure that, you probably want this does. back. I would love to have this back. Happy Thank birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Because it's actually your birthday today. Yes, it actually is my birthday. And he sent it today nice and sweaty in the ring. <laughs> I had fun on my birthday, I'll say yeah. that. This was a really cool gift uh, to be able to film these guys and, you know, just get like a nice action Asian martial arts scene under my belt, you know, while I'm here in Thailand. Nice. Next time you do Ip Man number four. I hope so. Donnie, if you're listening, <laughs> you watch this scene and tell me I'm not the director for your next Ip Man. <laughs>